Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Hilario Cordova, a PhD student at Kansas State University. So, Hilario, you've been on the show before, but it's been a while. So, can you give everyone a reminder of your background and some of your history and research? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Clayton, for having me in the show again. And um, I'm originally from Argentina. Uh, I did vet school back in my country, then worked for three years in the swine nutrition uh, field in Argentina, then moved to Kansas to start my PhD program in 2021. And until today, I've been working in several vitamin use, minerals, trials also, amino acid and energy. Uh, so that's why I'm here in the show today. A leader in swine nutrition solutions driven by science. Novus's products and services look at the whole animal, focusing on productivity and well-being in order to feed the world affordable and wholesome food. For more information, visit Novus's website at www.novusint.com. Awesome. So I understand that at Kansas State, you did some work on manganese supplementation and then looking at things like carcass characteristics and growth performance. Would you mind sharing some of that work that you did with us? Yes, sure. So uh, we did a study uh, to measure the effects of manganese in growth performance and carcass characteristics. So today we don't have to match uh, like uh, current requirements or uh, recent requirements about how much manganese we should feed to grow to finish. So there's some data, all the data from the 1950s saying that over 500 BPA we can error the growth performance, but more recent data didn't uh, show like improvements of difference in performance where we feel like wider ranges between 2 BBM to, to higher than 50 BBMs on manganese. Uh, actually, the current recommendation of NRC 2012 is 2 milligrams per kilogram of feed, or we can say 2 BBM in the road to finish period that is between 50 pounds to 285 pounds. Um, so current uh, data uh, published by K-State, uh, did by Kerkar and others, they use manganese, using manganese sulfate and manganese hydroxychloride, and they test uh, 8, 16, and 32 ppm in the same period, the road to finish period, and they didn't have differences in growth performance. So for this study, uh, what we did was to test increasing level of manganese hydroxychloride from 15 to 60 by ppm, and also we compare 30 ppm of manganese sulfate with 30 ppm of manganese hydroxychloride to see if there's any difference. Well, we use different sources of manganese, and as I said, uh, we test the effect of growth performance, um, body weight variability, and progress curve. So this research was conducted in a commercial farm. We used 2,025 pigs, uh, 27. Uh, Pigs per pen, mixed gender, uh, mixed gender pens, and we use 15 pens. So when uh, talking about assigning the pens to the treatment, we use five treatments. The first one was to use 30 ppm of manganese sulfate, and then the other four were increasing level of manganese hydroxychloride. We use 15, 30, 45, and 65 ppm of manganese hydroxychloride. So we fed these pigs uh, in four phases. We used corn, soybean meal, and DDG-based DDG uh, diets. Uh, and in the premix, we didn't include manganese. We include the manganese at hand that mix, uh, mix uh, using the sulfate or the hydroxychloride forms. And, but we did include 150 ppm of copper and 110 ppm of zinc, both from hydroxychloride. So we weigh the pigs each 14 days. We measure uh, the pen weights and also we measure um, the feed uh, dispersed to measure, to calculate the average daily gain, average daily feed intake, and the feed efficiency uh, of this trial. Also on day 78, we individually weigh the pigs to calculate the coefficient of variation uh, of the pens, uh, the difference between the treatments. And the same day, we uh, top the three heaviest pigs per pen and send them to the packing plant, but we didn't include those pigs in the carbs analysis. But then at the end of the study, uh, we send um, the pigs to the packing plant, we tattoo them to collect carbs data, we measure what carcass weight, uh, percentage of lean, back fat, and like that. Also with the hot carcass, data, uh, hot carcass weight, 
and the average weight of the pen we were able to calculate car as yield. So when moving to the results of this study, uh, when talking about growth performance, uh, if we break this finisher period into the grower from 80 to 180 pounds and then in a finisher period from 180 to 30, 300, uh, 300 pounds, in the overall and in the finisher, we didn't observe any differences between treatments uh, uh, in growth performance. When, but when we talk about the grower period between 80 to 180 pounds, we did observe a quadratic response to improve uh, feed efficiency when we uh, use 45 ppm of manganese hydroxychloride compared uh, compared to the lower or the higher inclusion of 65. However, when we look at the 30 ppms provided by the manganese sulfate or the 30 ppms provided by the manganese hydroxychloride, no difference. So as I said, uh, when we uh, do the pairwise comparison between the 30 ppms of both sources, uh, no difference at all. And also when you renew the cost as coefficients of the increasing levels, no difference at all in the overall. Then, as I said, we uh, weigh the bigs individually on day 78 of the trial. Uh, we calculate the coefficient of variation uh, of the best. Uh, we didn't observe difference uh, between the different level of manganese or on various of, of the sources of manganese. While the coefficient of variation of the pens were all 10%. Um, and then finally, when talking about cargo's data, no difference is observed equal cargo's weight or the back fat they lie. The uh, the line depth or the percentage of lean of this So, in summary, as I said, in the growth performance uh, side, we did observe that quadratic response to improve the feed efficiency in the grower period, while we used 45 ppm of manganese hydroxychloride, and then uh, but then decrease when we go over to 65. But no, we didn't observe any other difference in the finisher or the off. And again. In terms of coefficient of variation of caracas characteristics, no differences between using the increasing level of manganese hydroxychloride or the 30 ppm inclusion of the manganese and uh, sulfate of manganese hydroxychloride. So, as a conclusion uh, of this study, uh, there is no reason to feed more than 50 ppm of manganese hydroxychloride. Uh, uh, in terms of growth performance, carcass characteristics of coefficients of variation. And these results are very similar to what uh, Pierre and Albert found when they fed 8, 8, 16, or 32 ppm of manganese hydroxychloride over 8 ppm. They didn't also find any response in growth performance uh, in the grower finisher period of the pigs. Gotcha. So, one question I had why is manganese? mechanistically important for the pig? What do they exactly utilize that for cellularly? Yes, manganese in uh, this road to finish period is used by pigs um, as a cofactor of enzymes that are involved in the metabolism of carbohydrate, uh, proteins, and lipids. Uh, so that's the role that manganese has at, at this stage. So according to what we found in this research, and then if we came back a little bit, as I mentioned before, of NRC, NRC is recommending 2 ppm. And the reason why they didn't update that or at that point is because there's a lack of research uh, in the manganese side. Uh, but again, we are so kick art in 2021, we then found differences if you feel about 8 ppm. And then I found that over 15 ppm of manganese hydroxychloride in this case. There is no reason to feed over those uh, levels. Gotcha. So another question that I had for you was, I know that this study didn't necessarily yield the results that you wanted to see. I mean, everyone loves those low P values, but so what would be the next step in this line of research for you? Would you look at different uh, dosing levels or different um, types of uh, supplementation in terms of uh, binding or what, what exactly is the next step? Yeah. One thing, um, coming back to how this uh, experiment was designed, probably try to measure how the coefficient of variation of the bands is at the beginning of the trial to see if that, uh, because I mentioned at day 78, there was no difference between bands of the treatments in terms of coefficient of variation, but we didn't know how was the, the start light. So probably if we can have that information to have a, uh, 
a good understanding of what these minerals are doing during growing our finishing period would be great. And also, I think we need to test not only manganese, but another minerals uh, in grow finish diets like zinc or copper that they have interaction and, and they compete for absorption in the smart. When it comes to raising healthy animals, you need more than the right solutions. You need the right partner who brings decades of industry expertise and a global team to put that knowledge to work for the advancement of your operation. At Fibro Animal Health Corporation, we are proud to work with you as your trusted partner. Gotcha. Well, I believe that's all we have time for. So thank you, Hilario, for coming on the show and sharing all this data with us. Yeah, it's my pleasure. I want to thank to Selco and the Blessed Nutrition Group of Kansas State University for the support in this study. And also, if you want to know more about our research, you can visit uh, ksu.org. We have all the science nutrition research there. And also, you can subscribe to our Big Purple Magazine that is released. Absolutely. And to everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com and don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey everyone, we're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, feel free to email the details about your research to hello at wisenetics.com. Oh.